I V M. All right, we're back. Yet another episode of Football Shootball Season Three, where we're still trying to teach Ayer the beauty that Bollywood is, and try to learn from Ayer what beauty that football is. I don't know how it's going so far. We've learned more about football than Ayer has been able to learn about about Bollywood. That tells more about the teachers than the student. Ayer, how are you, man? You will be impressed, Sapre. This afternoon, I spent four hours watching Jo Jita Wohi Sikandar, approximately on 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 television. It was brilliant. This is the second time I'm watching it. I have seen it before once, but yeah, it's a, it's a good sports film. Why, why haven't we included that in one of our chats? It has quite a bit of action happening. We have the reason that you don't remember is because we initially exhausted all the sports movies. <laughs> so if you look, if you go back to season one, the first few episodes, you'll find all the Chuck days and mm. then the Nathan goals and all the so-called sports movies included. Uh, we don't have Shivram here with us. Do you know why? Not that I care, but do you know why? He's away on personal business. Personal business. Not bad, not bad. So, I think the two of us are enough. We'll do this episode. Quite a few things to talk about. It was Champions League weekend. And there it was a good, decent weekend in in England, at least the others. Ah, uh, I okay. thought it was pretty average, man. I mean, it, if, if this, yeah, if this was, was if this was decent, then there are no bad weekends. Like this was uh, meh. Yeah, the reason why is because I sucked at FPL this week. So whenever I suck, I would like to be credited <laughs> to the fact that the game week was better and I wasn't. Hmm. But you have caught me in a lie. We'll talk about it. You can cut, catch hmm. me in more lies uh, when we come after the break. Come back after the break. All right, break is over. Very short break. We need longer breaks. We need more sponsors, etc. But let's talk. Let's talk about the the the, the team that Shivram thinks or thought last season is going to win the league. I think he's a pool supporter this time on. But okay. Chelsea, right? I think Lukaku was the final piece, so-called final piece in that jigsaw. Now he's there. He's scoring goals, etc. Contributions are high. But let's talk about Alonso. Should we? Right. This was the guy. I mean, Ben Chilwell was the only signing that Lampard really wanted of his choice, right? And he was given that signing. And now he's nowhere to be seen once Tommy Tuchel is in. And Alonso is playing, I think, at a career best right now in the first three, four matches. He's playing as second striker almost. I'm very impressed by what he's doing. Have you been seeing Chelsea games? Uh, Marcus Alonso. And I'll add another name to the list. Cesar Aspelicueta. It feels amazing that the two are still there and starting for Chelsea and doing so well. It feels like... They've been around forever. And now that I think of about it, Alonso, wasn't he in Bolton at the start of the previous decade? Like, he seems like… It seems like it's been 20 years since, since Mark, we've been seeing Marcus Alonso. And it, it's fascinating, man. There's, especially to see these two play so well for Chelsea. And the other thing is, with, with Tuchel there, you know if you're not good enough, you're going to be hauled off at halftime. He did it to oh, Saul yeah. on his debut last week. He did it this time to Mason Mount. Mason uh, Mount, with, yeah. Yeah, which probably changed the game completely. Bringing on… And uh, N'Golo Conte, who, I mean, revolutionary his, his football was. I'm now, I, I, I spent, I think, the last week or the week before cursing Conte. And I either he heard it, but I take it all back. Because he was he was literally everywhere on, on that field. Brill, brilliant stuff. Title favourites for me so far. Oh, but, definitely. but we'll see, right? We'll see. We'll see. There's a, there's a long way to go. Long season to go. But I think considering the way the second half was… Even if Danny Drinkwater was brought on, Chelsea would have still probably won that game, right? I mean, yeah, the first half, they didn't create too many chances. I understand why Kante was brought in more space in the midfield, etc. But Spurs sucked. I mean, they just sucked in the second half. Oh, this is just typical Wolves in a different jersey, is what we're seeing right now. Yeah, yeah. what's up with Harry Kane? Is, Is it… Is he, is he like playing this badly so his price reduces and then, you know, this is him getting back at Spurs for not selling him for 150 million? No. no I, I, I don't get what's going on. Maybe just partly that. But he still plays okay. I mean, he, he has a tendency to fall back in the midfield to kind of mm. drive the game ahead. Now he's falling into defence to kind of drive the game ahead. <laughs> <laughs> because with Nuno, everybody is in defence. So he'll say, okay, I'll also be in defence. I don't know what's really happening with Spurs. Not that I cared. All the only reason I cared about Spurs is because uh, certain Mr. Jimmy Greaves uh, died this week, right? A prolific striker for Spurs. Started his career at Chelsea. Spent one season in a club that I love, which is Milan. Not that I ever got a chance to look at him. 
or mm-hmm. or see him play etc but i think a, a goal scorer recognized by everybody i i i, I uh, think he's he has that record of the highest englishman with the goals in league football something like 370 or, or, or yeah i think he he holds that jimmy greaves holds that record so yeah but i i've never seen him play. i don't think i've even seen a video of his but yeah so sure if you if you if you're listening to this and you would go and check him out i'm sure there's enough on youtube with that that you can get and it was it was pretty nice in a way to see his two former clubs going yeah. going at it today spurs didn't come out looking very good like you said and maybe you're right about harry kane actually I changed my mind he he does start season slowly so maybe give him maybe give him some time and by october he'll be back to the kane kane we know but who knows yeah who knows maybe nuno knows if maybe he'll get sacked we don't know but fortunes have changed for spurs and they've changed for arsenal right and they oh play God. each other this next game week they won the first three games by a single goal and then they lost the next two arsenal lost the first three games to one nil margin and now or one nil margin like the spurs beat them for five goals but they scored one <laughs> each against tough teams like norwich and burnley etc right so and they are playing this weekend what a terrible match that is going to be i'm sure uh even if there are like two goals in all i'll be really excited but i don't think that's going to happen should we talk about arsenal this is the moment for us to not talk about them because shivram's not here otherwise no, he would I have mean, been all gone you know what if they if they actually win on the weekend next week we'll cover arsenal because then they'll probably go above spurs which will be pretty pretty funny oh, and shocking at the yeah i think because then both will have three wins and goal difference I, i mean it could swing either way but but we'll yeah at least they'll go level on points with spurs so yeah actually they'll go above Let's, spurs because spurs didn't win their first three right they drew one mm, um, um, no they did win but 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 yeah i mean it it would be a pretty hasty fall by tottenham hotspur to now be level on points with arsenal within six weeks so yeah yeah only norwich kept them <laughs> from being 20th in the league But yeah, let's see. I mean, fortunes have changed for the two teams. Nothing really changed for Pool. I don't yes, think sir, the goals were great. One second before before you go to Liverpool, though, you mentioned Norwich. You think Norwich yeah. are ever going to get a point this season? I'm already <laughs> afraid of, of whether Norwich are going to go this entire season without without even getting a single point. Because okay, I made an, I made uh, the argument that they have played tough sides and they have. But come on, this was Watford this weekend, right? And uh, you. I mean Ismail Assar is a great footballer he should probably be at a better station at a better club but they just ran past this Norwich side who don't seem like they know how to defend at all they played they played each other last season at least twice mm. i don't know if they played otherwise in the cups or friendlies but at least they played twice so it's all Assar was at Watford this Norwich team is almost the same mm. um i don't think but you are the expert on championship football so i'll i'll <laughs> leave it to your better judgment on who's good who's not Pool, yeah. No, I was talking about pool because I I saw the game. I didn't really enjoy the goals as much. I mean, yeah, Mane with his I think hundred goals now for for him and Salah oh, wow. scoring one. And uh, but it was okay. The goals were fine. I mean, Trent didn't play, so I'm really pissed off. I mean, he was <laughs> ill or whatever. Even play him when he was ill, he still get you more points. He's still better than most of the players around him. But they, the 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 midweek Champions League fixture was great. Right? He came back from behind Henderson getting the third goal. Man, uh, I told you last week the game I'm looking uh, forward to most is Milan Liverpool, and that delivered. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow, that was superb. I, I mean, Liverpool were the better side. There is no doubt of about course. it. Over the course of 90 minutes, Milan somehow went into the break two one up, but that was an outstanding Champions League match. I mean, I think in the first 20 minutes there were like 15 shots or something. It was <laughs> oof. That, that's how football should game. be. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I I was looking forward. To it. My only concern was I don't like that foray into Champions League after so many years, and now the first set they have to play is Liverpool. At yeah, least no, give you, them a chance. Yeah, no, you were probably right. Win. You know, if if that uh, penalty from Salah, which was saved by Mike Magnan, if mm, if that mm. had gone in, Liverpool would have taken a two nil lead. Your prediction of a four nil could have probably happened because Milan were looking very very shaky at that point of time. So yeah. they did they did better over the weekend. We'll talk about it in the in mm. the final section. Uh, we've called this episode earlier, by the way, Til Ka Tar. I right? I tried sure googling you... Sapre. I did. I'm yeah. not able to find a movie. I'm not able to find a reference. I am clueless. I'll tell you what. It's not a movie. It's a drama, right? Mm-hmm. Til Ka Tar is much ado about nothing, right? 
Uh, which brings me to Manchester City and the comments that Pep Guardiola <laughs> made and you know, fight with some dude who's some five people ka they have fan organization. <laughs> He's some senior vice president, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. He got into a tiff. Uh, so much ado about nothing. Right? They, but the game of the weekend against Leipzig was great. I loved how Guardiola blasted, literally blasted Mahrez and Grealish for not tracking back. How can you blast Grealish for not tracking back? You know he's never going to track back. But, but, but let me ask you, you're saying that that match against Leipzig was brilliant and it was. Then what happened on the weekend? This match would have put anyone watching to sleep. 0-0 oh. versus Southampton. I think they had like, City had like 16 shots or something. One on target. One. Uh, he, if he wants fans to come and watch, I think the football may need to be a slightly bit better pep than, than, than what he's delivering. I mean, this is now saying this because after one week, they've been scoring five plus goals every time they've Correct. been playing in the previous week. So, But I thought this was a pretty shocking performance by City and they may be lucky to even come away with the point from Southampton. Here's, here's, where, I, here's where I fear slightly for City. It's the second time they've dropped points. Yeah, They lost yeah. to Tottenham and then uh, this match. Now… There are five sides who have not even, I think, got a single po- a single victory on the board. So, it seems pretty lopsided this season. Which means teams like Chelsea, Liverpool, United will keep seem to keep winning these games against the lesser clubs. Now, City are already trailing behind. And unlike last season or when they started slowly, I don't see a big drop-off by Liverpool, by Chelsea. It'll take three, three or four clubs to really drop down for City to come up. So, I think City better be a bit careful here by dropping these two points here and there if, if they want to maintain this challenge to their to their title. No, well, very well said. In fact, they have a chance this weekend. They're playing Chelsea. So, almost oh, like a… Six, nice. Yeah. Almost like a six-pointer there. So, that will be a good match to look forward to after the Champions League final. Uh, which was a mm. drab, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, when you yeah. expect Chelsea and City to play each other. But it's City, right? They started slow last season. They had games in hand and they kind of made the best out of it. De Bruyne has been playing. He played about 25-odd minutes. Uh, Foden played a few uh, minutes. So they are coming back. Hopefully, they're finding their place. Let's see what happens up front. I'm sure Grealish is going to get 10 more assists and you know all of that. I'm sure City will bounce back. It's it's a little blip right now. They've lost points yeah, earlier. I, I, I mean, yeah, they will get points. Yeah, what I'm saying is like last year, like Liverpool dropping off so much is not doesn't That's seem true. to be happening this season. Chelsea seem a better side. United seem a better side. So, so Brighton. I, just, so, so Brighton, Brighton. Brighton, yeah. Brighton are basically making up for last year, man. They should have got a lot more points last year. Uh, they, they, they were the XG champs. They're finally now scoring the goals that they should have got last year at this season. So, good on them. Good on them. They, Stay forth. Brighton took an a half entire half of season to make to get to three wins. Mm. They're already there this time. Mm. So my my only li- fear now, Sapre, is that Graham Potter suddenly Arsenal are going to look at him and think that oh man he's going to turn our club around and that poor guy poor guy's career is then going to again. I mean he's such a good manager. He shouldn't be put in a position of managing us. He shouldn't. Yeah, he shouldn't go the Marco Silva way after when they got him to Everton and he just. Couldn't deal with it. He was great hey, at Watford. What did it? Yeah. Marco Silva is now rebuilding at one of the best clubs in the world, which is Fulham. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, that suits yeah. him, so, right? <laughs> suits him. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's good. He's good for Fulham. Better than… He already seems better than Scott Parker, which is a surprise, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Could be. Uh, and also, since I'm wearing this jersey, I think it, we should talk about Mark, Martin Atkinson's farewell. It okay, should so, be soon. Okay, so there are two right. things about that game, right? 2-1 United over West Ham. The the penalty, we'll come to that. But you mentioned Atkinson. And now I want to ask you, because I'm not getting why there's so much whinging about refereeing in this match. I, I, didn't, I saw the match. I didn't see the sheer number of errors that United fans have been going on and on about. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just not looking at it. I thought Suchek was a pen. I thought Ronaldo should have maybe had one as well. But... I'm not getting you, you, you all won, so I think it's okay. I mean, it's, we won by a whisker. Yeah. We, I mean, David Daya was in the form of his life. From <laughs> saving he penalties. actually saved a penalty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that is what it took. The moment they got a penalty, we realized that this is definitely a draw. Mm. I mean, nobody could be like, 
maybe one hopeful optimist person not even only was the refereeing that that bad like was it it uh, was inconsistent i am not complaining about the look shop penalty i think that was a penalty people can complain about it. you know how should he defend the arms are going to be out mm. is not very far off from the ball i get it is it's unfortunate the hands out i'm sure had it ha- happened in the other at the other side i'm sure it would have been the same distance so i don't disagree with it the inconsistency uh on the other side with ronaldo i think there were three chances one was yes. an absolute disaster yeah. with ronaldo just looking for anybody to touch him or like the wind to blow him away just to fall <laughs> but a couple of others one especially with sufal that surely was a penalty yeah but i, I, I would all, have thought even even if they gave both it would have been fine there was one dive yes there was one dive but the other two even if he had given it yeah you're you're, you're probably right maybe it just seems funny to me that <laughs> i mean like this united are complaining about referees that i'm not finding it that serious no, as you all are you spoiled us you gave us so many penalties right previously <laughs> <laughs> now we're used to it <laughs> and the and the fact that you said dive is a very casual way of explaining what ronaldo really did dive is what bruno hmm. did a couple of times hmm. Hmm. Uh, the previous season this was just this was like sterling level dive hmm. okay now uh, say you're a manager was... sapre you you are getting a penalty in the 90th minute who do you bring on a player or if you're a player who do you want to come on and take that penalty if you haven't played the entire game you're probably not warmed up you've been sitting in on the bench in your track suit and you are probably not even kitted up until the last minute i mean it's a poor decision from moyes i'm sure if i'm sure he's admitted it also if not mm-hmm. not there's nothing really for him to admit he knows it uh mark noble has scored penalties he's scored yes. a lot of penalties so it's yeah. not he has a plus his brilliant record plus it's his day <laughs> so i mean he could have taken it left footed <laughs> moyes would have thought it should still go in mm. but maybe moyes realized that uh you know his it's, it's an injustice i don't think his team deserved that one point so he said send noble and noble being the noble person that he is but i think what what interesting for me was i like the fact that noble missed the penalty because he got into a fight with paul pogba last season like holding mm-hmm. next and all of it unprovoked absolutely so i'm glad <laughs> it was noble who missed and but the worst thing was pogba kind of mocking a few west ham fans Yeah, uh, and Michael Carrick tried to drag him. And Michael Carrick has a history with West Ham. He started his career at West Ham, so he was like, "Please just leave, <laughs> right? So don't embarrass me further. You embarrassed me in seventy minutes. Some loose touches in the second half, but yeah, I'm I'm also complaining. I'm a little bitter because I was I had Ronaldo as my captain, and I could have at least seen Ronaldo getting a hat trick plus three bonus points, all of that. Mm. So that is a bit disappointing for me. Let's see how it goes. I'll, I'll tell you good. what. May, maybe Atkinson's just not giving it because he doesn't want strife within the United ranks over who takes the penalty. So just maybe he, he's probably doing United a favor by not giving any pens. Like why, why, yeah. why should we see a, a possibility of a fight on the field? But here, here's another interesting thing I found about about the noble decision, him coming on, and this is again I thought it happened because of VAR, and now it has nothing really to do with the review system. but sure. because they took about a minute and a half to review whether it was a penalty or not is when i feel moise decided let's bring on mark noble if if it was just given and there was no way to review this and the players just complaining one of the west ham guys would have just picked up the ball placed it on the spot and shot it, it, it you wouldn't have had the extra minute to even contemplate bringing on another player so i think th- these are certain things that not just about reviews that we are as changed as well sometimes the time it takes between substitutions and what can and can and cannot happen on the field could be very possible for that to happen or maybe this is noble's last season i'm guessing at west ham now so i mean with this guy who with this guy who knows <laughs> yeah, yeah. he knows probably it. he probably has a contract for life he probably has a coaching gig there so as long as he's like the michael carrick Of 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 West, of West Ham, yeah. yeah. Michael Carrick could have been the Michael Carrick of yeah. West Ham, but <laughs> he made better decisions in life. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so so yeah, United still on top. Now Liverpool are second. Chelsea is first, and I was surprised. I don't know. It, did it ever occur to you as to why is Chelsea first and Liverpool second, even though they have the almost identical stats? And I kind of uh, Chelsea alphabetical or no. no? Wow! No, that's it, it, it can't be. It can't be. <laughs> <laughs> no lesser yellow cards or some. No, I don't no. Know. So, yeah, so I yeah I went through all of that, and then I then I read somewhere that because the Chelsea Liverpool game happened at Anfield, and because Chelsea scored a goal, 
Away. Oh, okay. Okay. That is the technicality. Like nobody realized. I never knew this is some. So the amount of planning, I'm sure they would have done. But that's uh, that's pretty ironic, right? Because in the Champions League, a cup competition, they've gotten rid of away goals, and now in the league, you have a differentiator, or uh, based on and uh, okay, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, but this is what it is. So that's largely um, a Premier League. We hope the gap isn't as much as it was last season. And I can already see that happening with Norwich pulling everybody down and Leeds not being able to win a game. I think it's going to be. Maybe not the gap between a club and the… But I think a lot of them… I think this is a poor season for a lot of clubs. I don't think there are that many, you know… There are, there are quite a few. No, there are there are many decent clubs, but there are quite a few really poor ones as well. There are, there are. Talking about miserable season, uh, FPL, right? What a misery, what a misery. But before we talk about my misery, there are other things that I want to talk about, which is if you want to join, please join. It's very easy to beat me definitely now because I've, I'm 113th a year. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, yeah, like really, string of poor decisions that I took. Right, I'm the Moes of this league. Woo! So, but but please do join this. There's a lot of competition on top. Uh, the code to join is 3HDRUY. If you didn't get what I said, just repeat this on loop until you get what it is. <laughs> let's, go, let's go to the league uh, and see who's there. There is a change. Uh, not in the Premier League. There is the Premier League. But also here, we have Sky Howards, who's now Ravin Kapoor topping the league. Uh, Not Sky, Ray, Shy, Shy Howards. Shy Howards, nice. Shy Howards, Chelsea fan, right? 402 points. And there's Tangled Up in Blue, Ishan Ganguly, also on 402 points. Now, I don't know why are they first and second. I don't know FPL rules as much. <laughs> they should, should be joined first or whatever. Uh, but that, that's how, but then same points. So, um, just be happy. I'm I'm 113. So just be happy. And, and and they both seem like Chelsea fans, right? Like yeah, Howard's yeah. and Shy Howard's Chelsea fan. Yeah. Second tangled up in blue Chelsea fan. Third yeah. is a F- Arsenal fan or a, no, there's a Fulham fan. Junkies FC. <laughs> uh, Shitij, uh with 63 points this game week. 400 overall. Uh, we have Varan Bhat, uh, Siddharth Bane, Bane at 396 points. Got 64. Not okay. Decent. And that's we have FC Vera Mari. We're still figuring out who does this person support. Ashwin Pichai. If you are listening, please tweet to us. Let us know. We're trying I mean, to decipher his name. The, the, only, the only footballer's name is there is Mari. So, Pablo yeah, Mari. I guess. Yeah. But, I mean, Arsenal fan doing so well is just unheard of. But that's how it is. He's dropped down. He was ahead. So, that's the top mm-hmm. five right now. Uh, I did poorly. I told him I'm 113th. I'm not going to ask where you are because I'm guessing you're some 313th. I, I were... I mean, I'm. I don't think I did very well at all. But I think because you did so badly, I've come within a hundred of you. So <laughs> that could be true. That could be true. Uh, Shivram's not a Shivram did very well actually. This on so he's he's really watching these matches, and I don't know what he's doing. He's not helping us for sure. I mean, no. I I I'll give him credit, even though he's not here. He's. I mean, he's trying to help. I don't think you and I are even opening the links that he's sending. But he's constantly spamming our WhatsApp group with like some random videos on how to make your team better. I don't think we we even we just scroll past, right? Like until the Saturday that comes, we're we're not sitting in. Yeah, but he's he is trying to help, and maybe it is working for him. So maybe we should start reading (laughs) what he says. So what we'll do is we'll ask Shivram to kind of tweet uh, Mm. his FPL picks or do's and don'ts for the coming week. We'll do. I'll do one. And let's do one each. Right? I'll tell what my what I believe one should do next mm-hmm. game week, and you can go with what one shouldn't do this coming game week. And I genuinely think I know Chelsea's playing City. It's not going to be a very high scoring game. I don't think people need to drop their Chelsea players or sell them off. Keep them. In fact, after the City game, try and triple up on Chelsea. Most of their players, you know, certainly who's going to play, who's not. Uh, Rudiger will play. Um, uh, Alonso will play Lukaku will play Kante is back so after City game I'm sure he'll play uh, Coach at George you know, we don't know but Mount will certainly play Howards will like Howards Howards will play ZH will not play so you have a, a decent number of players you know who you can pick triple up on them they've got some fantastic fixtures uh, they play Southampton Brentford Norwich Newcastle and Burnley right? oh wow like five goals each match, Lukaku, definitely, I'm guessing. 
<clears throat> so that's my advice. Hold on to Chelsea players. Triple up on Chelsea players after the City game. Um, and I think that's the only advice I have. I'll try and follow my advice as well. Ayer, what should we not do this game week? What should we not do? I would say, be very careful about playing anyone from Brentford. They're playing. Mm. They're playing Liverpool. Liverpool will have a real, real go at them. So I would even if you have Brentford players, that's that's fine. But keep them out on the bench for this for this for this game week. I fear a mauling. On good on advice, Saturday. actually. Most yeah. people just have two. One is their striker, Tony. Ivan Tony, yeah, yeah. And mm. and Raya, who's the goalkeeper. Mm. I and would most... definitely remove Raya for this for this. Uh, Thank for you this, for your for advice. Plan. I'm sure you've seen my yeah. FPL team, and your this advice is pointing towards <laughs> me rather than everybody else. On that somber note, we'll take a quick break. We'll come mm-hmm. back. There is some stuff that has happened. Outside of England. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll touch upon that a little after the break. Alright, let, let's get to it. You, Karthik, I'm leaving this to you. You pick what you want to choose. Allegri <laughs> abusing the shit out of his players. Right? Messi being hurt emotionally, then physically. And why is everybody blaming Ronald Koeman? I don't know. Pick whatever you want. Uh, we'll Zero start three. with the last. We'll start with Kubit. Why are you so supportive of him? This is the guy who's playing PK not, and Luke. I, I get it. I am not supportive of him. Right? But everybody is dismissive of only him. Hmm. You exactly knew what his capability is, what he's coming and he's, he's no Guardiola. I mean, <laughs> what do you expect from Ronald Kubit uh, with a squad that you know hmm. you have to sell some players? You're not going to get a lot of money to to get new players. Half your team is, including Dembele, or only Dembele is, is perennially, you know, not playing, not training. What is that guy supposed to do? I mean, yeah, don't expect too much from him. I'm sure he didn't come here thinking I'm going to stay here for the next five years. Right? But, <laughs> I, what, <laughs> I honestly, I think it, it's, it's hilarious, man. Luke De Jong and PK are your strikers against Granada when you're looking for a goal to equalize. Wow. I mean, we have seen PK play in that role before, but not this way, coming on and just playing only as a striker. This was... Oh, man. I don't know what got into it. Maybe it could be from, I think, the defeat to Bayern, where PK said that after a point, there were just way too many kids on the field. Yeah, yeah. It it is. And now, PK seems to have become this mascot of protecting the players. He's trying to go mm. to the fans, stopping Sergio Roberto from being booed, stopping them from booing Luke de Jong, for example, or, or anybody else who's playing. It's, it's, a, it's a mess. And on the other end of the spectrum, Benzema and Vinicius Jr. are oh, just yeah. killing mm. it for Real Madrid. Madrid are not playing great. I mean, whenever Hazard and Bale are there, it just seems like they're probably going through the motion. They're trying. But these two have started the season brilliant. Like it's like six goals for Benzema and five for Vinicius, and they keep assisting yeah. each other as well. And this is coming from two guys who, if you remember, Sapre, I think two years ago, Benzema was caught saying on camera that don't pass the ball to Vinicius. Don't pass he's to playing, Vinicius yeah, yeah he, he's playing for the other team. I swear, he's playing for the other team. Now, now the bromance has like reached another level. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, I think this was like the Chuck Dinder. He'll not pass. He'll not pass. <laughs> and that's what's happening, right? But expected from Benzema. Uh, mm. He's been good over the past. I mean, even after Ronaldo left and last season, he didn't even have Bale around, and he had Hazard around, but in the dressing room, not on the pitch. He mm-hmm. still performed, so I'm not really surprised of what he's doing right now. Vinicius Junior, good for him, I think, and I'm sure they will get a lovely player, or one of a Haaland Mbappe types in the coming season, or even in January if Mbappe doesn't sign that contract. So yeah. that's going to be some. Some really good players playing in the front line. Talking I mean, they'll, front, uh, they will have to get rid of a few, right? Like, okay, we can discuss this later. <laughs> but, I mean, imagine, man, Hazard, Vale, Mbappe, Vinicius, Benzema. This is not counting Isco and Rodrigo who are there as well. And I'm sure I'm forgetting a few also. So, oh, Yuka yeah. Jovic, he's also there. Oh, oh, Valverde sometimes goes and plays ahead for some ah, reason. This is, it's it's they have, crazy. They have too many players. But I think the level of competition at Barcelona is offering this season. <laughs> I'm sure Madrid are happy. Neither is neither is Atletico Madrid. I mean, I think Atletico have been, have been a bit. Griezmann. Yeah, they, he, they, he's been poor. They've been uh, lucky in a few games, but that is Atletico. They, I, they, I think they'll come good. You trust Simeone to make sure that always. this side this side comes good. So always, always I, I'm not Simeone. as down on them as I am on Barcelona. 
because it's 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 Memphis and pretty much nothing else for for that side. It's, disaster, yeah. man! Disaster for the team. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, disaster for Juventus for two points, right? Two, two draws, points in four games. Two yeah. losses. Yeah. yeah. Allegri abusing the players, saying, "What the fuck is you're playing for Juventus?" <laughs> That's what he had to say. And he threw a couple of those the, the players under the bus as well hmm. uh, after the game for not tracking back, etc. I mean, tough for him, right? He came back after a hiatus. He thought he'll be successful. He still has a decent team. He doesn't have a bad team, right? He was yeah. still, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, discounting Torre, Sapna Morata. No, but, 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 but Morata but is the one actually. scoring your goals. Yeah, he scored and so you have Dybala and Chiesa there. You have Kulusevsky there. This should be an absolutely awesome… La- but their midfield is non-existent. I mean, they still sometimes depend on Aaron Ramsey. He's still on their books, man. So, the, the, there is a problem. The Adrian Rabio is your best midfielder. Okay, you have a problem. Midfield is pretty non-existent. And Dilit, I know you're a fan, but Matas Dilit has not really re- gone up a level since going from Ajax to Juventus. I think he's he's at that he's stagnated a bit uh, at, at Juventus. He has. Maybe that's part of Raiola's plan to get him away from Juventus. And I'm sure mm-hmm. he will next season if this form continues for them. I think for Juventus, it's either win this good or don't. Like, there's nothing… You can't come second and be happy. It's, it's like yeah. Chelsea. Yeah, right? but to wait at the rate at which they're going, it'll become like last year when Champions League <laughs> qualification becomes a last day affair, right? Yeah. And and yeah, that, that is something you don't want. Because Chiesa is someone, I think, who's going to be a world superstar. He proved it in the Euros. He's doing it for Juventus. Uh, players like him won't not play in the Champions League. At least yeah. in this day and age. This is not your Del Piero Buffon era where the team gets relegated and they go down with the side and come back up. No, it doesn't doesn't happen anymore. So, let's hope there's Napoli on top, I think, of the league. Yes. Milan, yeah. like that. I think Inter's there. Roma, we don't know what, with Mourinho what you're going to get through oh, the season. Oh, it was brilliant. It was… It was, it was <laughs> I, I wouldn't have watched this game. I just switched it on and I kept it on. Roma versus Verona. It was sensational. 3-2 to Who Verona. So, Mo- Mourinho was… Oh, lovely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so, Roma were leading and then Verona came… I think Loma then were leading 2-1 and then Verona won 3-2. It was… Oh, brilliant match. All happened in the space of like 20 minutes. All the goals went in. So, sexy, sexy. This makes me happy, man. <laughs> this makes me happy. Okay, let's move. Let's move. <laughs> What is wrong with Messi and the So we're, we're saving the best best for last. Yeah. I, is, I, yeah. I, I'm yet to come to terms with really what happened. I know he mm. was pissed when he was taken off. And you don't want to lie about Messi. I'm sure Messi's going to come back and say, F***ing stop lying. You didn't bring me off because you wanted to save me for some other matches. Mm. I, something went wrong there. What I love about Pochettino is he doesn't think of himself as an equal. Like a Zidane managing a Ronaldo. Zidane can consider himself as an equal given what he's done and he's achieved. Pochettino is under no such pressure. So, he can behave the way he wants to with Messi. Because Messi has to drag himself down to kind of of fight with Pochettino. So, I don't know what really happened. Is he emotionally hurt? Is he really hurt? He got his knee cracked. I know when he was playing for Argentina, it's the same injury. Come back again. Yeah, so… then what is wrong with Neymar? I'm sorry, what is wrong with Neymar? So, I saw this game end-to-end. Brilliant match against PSG Lyon. Thank, thanks to Woot for bringing Liga to this to this <laughs> lovely country of ours. Um, you're right about the injury because he's going to miss the midweek game against Met. So, he is hurt. But that substitution was not because of an injury. It was because Di Maria, Mbappe, Neymar and Messi mm, were not working. Although, I will say Messi was their best player. He hit the bar in the first half. He had the best chance. He had a good one-on-one in the first half as well. So, he was their best player. Mbappe was non-existent until his assist for Ricardi late on. Neymar was not, not probably not there on the field as well. He, he, was, he was pretty poor. So, I can get why Messi was pissed that he was brought off. But I think you've stumbled upon something very interesting there, Sapre. Because if results don't go their way or the players start getting tired of Pochettino, the next bet you would have on a manager coming in should be Zinedine Zidane. He is someone who the players, I mean, they can't say anything to and he can handle these guys. That's Carlo true. Ancelotti is probably the other one, but he's not coming here. So, Zinedine Zidane is your, your, your stumble on probably PSG's next manager in, in, the, in the course of this discussion. Because they will need, right? M- Mbappe is not staying. I don't think he gives mm. a shit about the mm. team anymore. He just wants to move. So, he's off. Messi will play probably another season with them. Uh, Neymar is not getting any younger. Di Maria is not getting any younger. They need a few players. 
Uh, and they need a decent manager as well because I mean, how often do you really want to league? I mean, win win that Farmers League they lost last season, yes. Mm. But I'm sure they're going to come back at least compete at the top. So let's see what happens at PSG. Um, interesting. They all, also they're the only team who can throw money at the kind of players they really want to yeah. get. But, but not 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 a good look when you stomp off like that after being substituted and refuse to you know shake the manager's hand. Mm. Uh, Messi does have previous for this. He does, no no player likes being substituted. We've seen Ronaldo throw a hissy fit as well. But I think this was a shock because it was his first start for PSG. So it was like you're not even you know letting me play out my my first start. And we need a goal. They were yeah, trailing they were. at that, that yeah at that. No, point it was one time. all. It was one all, right? I think, they got I think Icardi came it. on and scored. Oh no, Icardi came on and scored the winner. It was one all. It was yeah. one all then. Yeah, at that point. Yeah. So funnily, yeah. let, let's see what happens. There are no Champions League games this week, but no. there is EFL, so don't waste your breath on it. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, no. Even the, in the other leagues, there are some matches, but nothing that really stands out. So I would say take a break. Though don't stay up too late. This, this, this. Yeah, time. watch IPL rather. Yeah, right? that gets over Virat, at Virat, Virat Kohli's last season as a captain for RCB, uh, and the way things are going could be his last match as a captain pretty soon. <laughs> I don't think they'll wait for the season to get over. <laughs> Uh, let's see. IPL is interesting. It's back. I am excited. And if nothing else, watch Big Boss. Yeah, that's about <laughs> it. I think the only exciting match to watch, if you want to watch, is United West Ham. But again, a lot of fringe players will come. Oh, in. it's, not even a, like the FA it's Cup. a repeat. It's a repeat of the weekend. Is it? Yeah, but it's not even like an FA Cup where you want to at least yeah, eight yeah, good yeah. players. This is no. These the, will be the kids, right? Yeah, kids and Ronaldo. So. <laughs> yeah, of course, he has to <laughs> score goals. <laughs> So that's what you have to look forward to. Uh, we miss Shivram. We look forward to having him in the next episode, which is going mm-hmm. to come next week. Uh, hopefully, we'll have better things to talk about by then. Right? Till then, thank you, Karthik. Always a pleasure to have you. And Bye, I Supriya. hope you, now you know what Tilka Tard really means. So try and use it in a sentence whenever you're talking to Supriya. <laughs> All right. See you. Bye-bye. So if you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM network. You can listen to us on the IBM podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media handles. We are at IBM podcast on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I'm Fickleberry Hun on Twitter and Instagram. That's Huckleberry Finn, but Fickle. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, I am Sapre on Twitter and G Sapre on Instagram. And you can reach out to me at Irant, which is I-Y-E-R-A-N-T on Twitter and Instagram. This is football. Should ball recognize?